Welcome back to The City Current Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good. And we love talking about business ethics. We are here with Madeline McNeil. She is the Market Programs Coordinator for the Better Business Bureau of Middle Tennessee and Southern Kentucky, the BBB. Madeline, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Doing very well. So we love talking about the Better Business Bureau. You do so much for ethics and accountability and making sure that businesses are, are doing all the right things and consumers are protected. And so before we dive into the Integrity Foundation and the things that you really want to talk about, let's start with some context. Give us a little bit of background on the BBB. For more than 100 years, the BBB has been focusing on helping people find uh, businesses, brands, and charities that they can trust. Um, there are local BBBs throughout the U.S., Mexico, Canada, um, and including ours, BBB serving Middle Tennessee and Southern Kentucky, we serve over 45 counties. Um, and our mission really is to advance the marketplace trust. So we're always um, looking to provide resources, not only to you know, businesses, but also to the consumers. Robin on your end has come on often talking about scams and things that are prevalent, how to protect yourself. And so you mm -hmm. are a consumer advocate for sure. And especially in a day and age where unfortunately there's so many cybersecurity threats going on, being well protected. Talk about how you all work though, because you do have member organizations with the businesses. So give us a little bit of kind of the DNA of, of how everything is structured. So in terms of businesses, um, if you meet the certain criteria to be accredited, um, we then set up um, you with an account manager um, and you get to work with an account manager. We also have regional managers um, in the area. Um, but basically, when you're accredited, you're, off, you're offered resources to help run your business, um, not in just you know, your customer relationships, um, how to maintain your online reputation. Um, there's also the added benefit of when you have your online BBB profile, um, you can have leads sent to your profile. Um, it also um, gives you the benefit of working with consumers if there's a dispute. Um, BBB allows you to work with that consumer to help resolve that. Um, and then there's also the benefit too of consumers being able to post reviews. So when a consumer is going online and they don't know where to start and they, you know, for example, if they're trying to renovate their home, um, you know, they go to search BBB and they can search the companies and they can see the reviews from the consumers um, and even the, the complaints and see how the business resolved those complaints. Um, so those are just a few things to towards um, BBB accreditation and how that all works. Yeah. And I think on both ends, the transparency and being able for the consumers to go in and see the accreditation and see their rating. And then on mm -hmm. your, you know, the other side, like you say, the business to be able to interface and make sure that they can handle that process um, with respect and the integrity, but also to have a, a good foot forward in terms of them being an ethical business and doing things the right way. So on both ends, building that trust and, and respect in the community. What's one more thing before we kind of switch over? What's one more thing that you wish everyone knew about the BBB? It's a really good resource. Um, you know, we're always trying to look towards ways to improve the types of resources that we have. Um, and a lot of times, sometimes people think it's just consumer based, but we're also heavily business um, resource based. Um, and so we want both sides. We want to support both sides and, um, you know, have each be able to do the best that they can. So. Yeah. And that's a good segue into what we really want to talk about, which is, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, tied to an award. We'll, we'll kind of tie that in just a second, but give us, you have the Better Business Bureau Integrity Foundation. Let's start with the foundation and then we'll switch over and talk about the Torch Award for Ethics. But give us a little bit about the Integrity Foundation. The Integrity Foundation is ex an extension of PBB, Middle Tennessee and Southern Kentucky. Um, so this is basically just another resource where we're providing uh, training and education. And then this is also where we run our awards and recognition programs. Uh, so the foundation has two goals. Um, like I said, we are looking to educate um, and then uh, celebrate. So um, we, we want to celebrate the role models within our community who are working so hard to build that trustworthiness with 
uh, not just their customers, but also with their employees and also within their industry. Yeah. And we'll definitely come back to the celebration in a second. Stay on the education side. When you look at the different topics and themes throughout the year, what have been some of the recent topics to put together the workshops and seminars and that education side? What are some of the the things that you're seeing on the business side as pain points, but opportunities to be able to help pour in? Sure. So uh, part of the Integrity Foundation, we have an event speaking um, program. And so uh, a lot of times we can have a BBB representative uh, go out to talk with students, uh, corporate events, or even entrepreneurs. um, And they can speak to pretty much any topic um, if they have a requested topic. But a lot of the topics we hit are BBB 101, um, you know, customer relationships, their online reputation. Uh, we'll even discuss uh, scams, like current scams that are going on, just, you know, to make them relevant and how to handle that. Uh, so those are some of the, the main topic points that we talk about with, with businesses and um, students and whatnot. So let's talk about the celebration because you do have the Better Business Bureau Torch Award for Ethics Awards Program. Mm -hmm. Touch on that program overall, and then we'll start diving into some of the nuances. Sure. Uh, So the BBB Torch Award for Ethics uh, was established back in 1998 um, as a way to celebrate the local businesses within uh, the community. And, you know, they work so hard and we want to be able to recognize, um, you know, their hard work. But it's also it, the award is also more than just recognition. This award is also about um, raising the bar and setting a, a standard for what it means to, you know, be trustworthy, transparent, and have ethics and integrity within your community or within your organization. Yeah, and I think anytime you have an award show. To your point, you're spotlighting those who are doing good. And so it's an honor for them to be recognized. And in your case, it's, are they doing things with ethics? It's the marketing, it's the operations, it's the Mm -hmm. feedback and, you know, all of that loop. And then on the other side, it's to your point, encouraging that behavior among the wider community. So it's spotlighting and saying thank you and celebrating but it's also using them as a role model to say, this is what we're trying to emulate. And this is, this is the goal. We need to be treating everyone in terms of customers in our community with the highest respect and doing things the right way. In this case, it's for businesses, but it's also for nonprofits too. And so talk about kind of who's eligible. For-profit organizations and then 501c6 nonprofit organizations are eligible to apply. Um, As long as your organization is located within the BBB, Middle Tennessee, and Southern Kentucky region, uh, you have been in business for three years or more, um, and you have to have at least a B rating with BBB in order to apply. Um, And you also, you do not have to be accredited in order to apply. So this is open to any of those organizations that meet that criteria. When you're looking at the judging criteria and what you're basing it on, give us a little bit of a teaser of just kind of that side of things. Sure. So the application is based off of what we call the four C's of trust, which is character, customers, community, and your culture. And so we have four uh, questions that hit each of of those four C's. Um, And so we have, um, the judges are looking to see, you know, not only what you're doing, but they also want to see what you're doing. Um, and so uh, there's there's a lot of um, information on the website that can kind of give a little more detail on to what exactly uh, the judges are looking for. Um, but it's a very open-ended question because each organization is different in how they're going to apply to each of those four C's of trust. Um, but we're always looking for, you know, not only what you do, but we want to hear your story and the judges want to see what you're doing. And I think when you're talking about trust and uh, in this case, the ethics, it's it's not just the end result and what you're doing, the impact, it's mm-hmm. also how you're doing it. And so are you right. doing it with the utmost respect? And so, you know, to your point, kind of diving in and getting a little bit deeper with those questions and that feedback really is important for that reason. It gives you context on both sides. Um, share a little bit about just kind of the process on the timing in terms of how it works. So right now we have our call for nominations 
um, which is where businesses or consumers can go ahead and nominate uh, an organization for the Torch Awards. Um, once you are nominated, uh, I will reach out to that organization and tell them their next steps. So I'll review um, how, to, how to apply. Um, we have some resources for organizations because it is a pretty in-depth application process. Um, and so the application deadline is June 30th. And so they have about two months to fill out the application. Um, and then once the applications are submitted, the judges will review them for, um, it takes probably about a month to go over all the applications. And the goal is to have the recipients announced in August. Uh, once we do that, um, we will then start announcing it to our media outlets, um, sharing it with the community. And then we also will have a torch award presentations with each of the organizations sometime in September. Nice. So mm -hmm. basically, so April 30th is the nomination deadline. June 30th is the application, making sure that everything is, is filled out correctly. And then Correct. it kind of kicks into overdrive after that with the judging and then the award mm -hmm. ceremony and everything else too, and celebrating. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Um, give us a, a little bit of a recap for 2021's winners, just so we have some context around, you know, what, what kind of celebration when you talk about the companies and nonprofits, give us a recap from last year. Sure. So uh, we had three winners uh, from last year. Uh, our small business category winner was Lucas uh, Motor Works uh, Welding and Fabrication. They are based out of Murfreesboro, and they are a high-end metal uh, fabrication and coatings company. Then we had our medium business category winner, which was the Dan Company, and they're based out of Nashville. Uh, they provide general contracting services, such as painting, carpentry, etc., um, and then we had our extra large business category winner, which was First Community Mortgage, and they are also based out of Murfreesboro, and they are a mortgage banker. Um, and so those were our three winners. And um, the categories are based off of the number of employees as well. Um, so, you know, we'll have six categories. Uh, we have a small, medium, uh, large, extra large. And then for the 501c3 nonprofit, we have a small and large category. When you look at last year's winners and obviously, you know, kind of looking ahead for this year, what puts a smile on your face when you see the impact, you see how the companies are operating, you, you see the process and the ethics and the trustworthiness, like all these things, and you, you could be specific or not, but what puts a smile on your face when you look at the 2021 honorees and then obviously what lies ahead for this year? The one thing that I always look forward to reading is the community part of the application process. Um, you can really tell from these organizations that they're, they're not just wanting to make an impact within the industry, they really do want to make an impact in their community. Um, so for example, with the Dan company, something that really stuck out to um, me and the judges was when the tornado came through, um, they put together teams and hit the streets uh, in East Nashville and just started going up and down the streets asking residents, hey, do you need help? Um, what can we do? Uh, that type of thing. So it's just, it, it's just a really feel good moment to be able to read those moments um, that organizations do and, and to know that they, they really do care about the community and that they're really, um, you know, looking for just different ways to support it. Um, and that's, I mean, that's just, we're looking for stories. And so that's just something that the judges and I, like, we just love reading about the stories. I think anytime you have a chance to be honored with an award, especially around good business practices, ethics, trustworthiness, treating your customers and your community with respect and doing the right thing, that's a good thing. And there is a halo effect, I think, as a result of that. But what would your words of encouragement be for businesses to take that step and be nominated and go through the process? Like talk about the benefits of this award and recognition. Sure. Uh, so when you go through the torch award ethics um, application process, like I said before, it's a pretty in-depth application and you're hitting the four C's of trust. And so when you're doing this, um, it can be a, a really in-depth review of how you're running your organization. So it can, it can benefit and, and open your eyes to new opportunities on, on how you can grow as a company or things that you can do better or, or even um, be like, oh, wow, like we're doing this. And it kind of you know, helps uh, keep you motivated. 
Um, but when you win a torch award for ethics, um, there's a lot of benefits that come from it. Uh, BBB um, offers PR opportunities for the winners. Um, so that can mean website recognition on BBB.org and the foundation website. Um, we are working with our media partner this year, which is WKRN, and they will be doing um, an announcement at the end for our recipients. Um, we also send out a press release to all of our media contacts. Um, there's BBB promotional um, opportunities. So for last year's winner, uh, we had the opportunity to post billboards um, throughout the region of our winners and, and you know, showcase them that way. Um, so there's a lot of PR benefits that, that go into winning the Torch Awards and just sharing it with the community. Wrap up with website, your information for questions, like where do we go to uh, sure. learn more, to fill out the nomination and reach out with any questions? So uh, to learn more about the program and to nominate or even to apply, uh, you can go to www.bbbintegritifoundation.org slash awards. Um, there you'll find the links to nominate and apply. Um, for questions, uh, anyone can feel free to reach out to me. Again, my name is Madeline. Uh, you can reach me at mmcneil at gobbb.org. And I'm more than happy to, to sit and talk through any questions that any organizations have. Um, in terms of social media, you can find us on Facebook and at uh, BBB Middle Tennessee and Southern Kentucky. And then Twitter is at BBB Middle Tennessee. Well, Madeline, greatly appreciate all you and your amazing team do. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.